Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial video in our tutorial series where we take a look at the Spring Boot with Angular. In our tutorial series we have building an application uh, which is some kind of a management application for a vehicle park. So you are a taxi service or something like that and this would be your application that you are use, using to manage your vehicles that you have. So in this specific video, we want to extend that application. So we want to extend uh, one of our entities uh, with the type. So the, the goal of this video is basically to show you how you can extend the Hibernate entities uh, with column, basically link them to another table. In our case, it would be a vehicle type table. So our vehicle will have a vehicle type. I have already implemented this and as you can see it on the screen I've extended our application. Now we have another page called vehicle type where you can enter the vehicle type name and create it. Uh, all of the things that we had previously work like sorting, filtering and stuff like that. And I've also extended our vehicle table, so our uh, sorry vehicle page. Now with the vehicle number you also can enter a vehicle type. So there's this drop down which filters all of the types that we have. So the ones that we created here, they are being filtered here and then you can select them and create a vehicle. And again, everything else works, deletion and stuff like that. And here we have some vehicle number as before. And yeah, it's actually quite simple. So now what I want to do is guide you through the process, uh, what exactly you need to do to extend the vehicle entity and create a new vehicle type entity and link those two. Firstly, uh, let's take a look at the backend. So I'll switch to my IntelliJ. And uh, if we look to the Git uh, uh, change set, so to the Git changes, you can see that I've changed a lot of files. But worry not, we'll go through all of them and then I'll explain you uh, what you want to do. First, uh, let's take a look at the entity. So this is something that you want to create very first. So if we go to our entity, you can see that I have a vehicle type entity. So we have the entity annotation and we have a name of our table. But you can see also that now it extends the named entity. So the named entity is something new I created uh, so that we can reuse it later on. It's all of those distributed entities uh, that are going to have a name. For example, our distributed entity here does not have a name, but now our named entity is providing that. It's again also map superclass, meaning that we don't create a table for it. We're just going to be using it to extend some of our existing entities. And also one thing that we forgot in our previous video is to change this from auto to identity, because now we're using Liquibase and our Hibernate uh, sequence table does not exist anymore. So you need to switch to identity here for make, to make everything to work. Okay, so now that we have our vehicle type entity, we want to link it to the vehicle entity. So if we go to the vehicle entity, uh, you can see that it's a many to one relationship. So many vehicles can have one type and we are joining the column with this name. So vehicle type and it's nullable. One thing that's uh, important to note here is that I wanted to make our vehicles, uh, so vehicle type, um, not nullable basically. So you're not allowed to have a vehicle without type. And in order to handle that uh, with Liquibase, you would actually have to update the existing data if you have it and uh, add some type to it. And uh, it's, it gets a bit complicated and I wanted to save that for uh, different tutorials and uh, not for this video. So before we do any generation of the change set and execution, please go to your uh, workbench and drop all of the tables that you have. So you should have uh, three tables. So if you have vehicles, basically you want to drop that. You want to empty that table and you want to drop the, anything in the change set. So the table should be empty. The easiest way to do that is just drop them and you'll be set to go. After you have done that, uh, you can go to the <coughs> generate changelog. So you would like to generate a changelog. In our case or in your case, you don't have to do that. I'm just explaining you the steps I did. You don't have to do it because I already did it. So the changelog master file already con contains the new uh, vehicle type entity and all the links between them. So all you would have to do after you have dropped your data, so after you have dropped your tables and you are have an empty schema, execute the changelog and everything should get created. Great. 
Now the next thing that we want to do after we have created our link between the vehicle type entity and the vehicle, we want to create a vehicle type DTO. So if we go to our DTO folder, you can see again, I have this name DTO. So it's extending the base one, contains the name, same reason as I did it for the entity. Um, vehicle type is just empty, extends the name DTO. Later on, maybe we want to extend this with something. In case where you do not want to extend it later on, you could uh, just use the name DTO directly in the vehicle DTO. So that's also a thing to do. And vehicle DTO is, yeah, has a vehicle type DTO here nothing special. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is you create the vehicle type API. It's exactly the same one as for the vehicle. Uh, we are extending uh, the abstract cradle one with the vehicle type and a vehicle type DTO. After that has been done, we want to create the vehicle type DTO converter. Again, same thing as for the vehicle, we are just converting from the vehicle type entity to the vehicle type DTO. And um, besides the basic con conversion, we are also converting a name in this case. After we have done that, we also want to extend the vehicle DTO converter because now in the vehicle DTO, we want to set the vehicle type DTO also to it. So we are taking the uh, vehicle type from the entity, getting its ID and its name and setting it to the vehicle. After we have finished with this, we want to create the vehicle type uh, repository. Again, exactly the same as for the vehicle one, uh, except we are just using the vehicle type entity here. With that being done, we want to create a service. Now, uh, vehicle type service is quite simple. It's exactly the same as the one for the vehicle. You make, want to make sure that you implement the correct API, to use correct ATOs and correct entity correct repository and the correct converter. But besides that, everything else is the same. And here, instead of setting the number for the vehicle, we are setting the name and that's it. The entity topic is vehicle type or whatever you want to specify. You just have to make sure that you match it on the front end. After we have done that, we want to extend the vehicle service. Now in the vehicle service, um, we want to be able to, uh, we want to provide the vehicle type service. So we want to auto wire it so that we can use it to find the entity by the ID. So when creating it from the front end in this uh, Dropbox that I showed you, if you select one of the vehicle types that you have, it will come in with this DTO. And then you want to be able to find that vehicle type entity. To do that, you will use the vehicle type service, find entity by ID method and we provide the type ID and then just find the entity and set it here. This method is not available uh, immediately, so we had to extend it. So if you take a look at the abstract cradle service, you can see that I moved it from here. So it was a private entity, uh, so a private method, and I moved it here and it's available now in the abstract cradle service. And if I actually jump here, you can see that I have uh, added to the API, but I forgot to override it here. So let's add this really quickly. And yeah, so now this uh, method is available and we can be using, we can use it in the vehicle service. With this, we are done with the backend. There is nothing to be mentioned here, I think. I think I went through all of these files. So we have executed our liquid base, we have created our tables, they're currently empty, no data there. Let me collapse the backend and go to the front end. Oops, don't want to do that. Um, and see what kind of files did we change here. Actually, maybe I can just go to Git and I can show you here. Um, in the app module, I just added uh, uh, the vehicle type component and the mat select component. So here you make sure that we create the vehicle type uh, component. I created it inside of the vehicle uh, folder on the front end and it's exactly the same as the vehicle component. So basically I just copy pasted those files and uh, uh, changed whatever was mentioning vehicle, I changed it to the vehicle type. So it's exactly the same what we have before, nothing special there. And I changed all of the endpoints so that they are now fetching the vehicle types instead of the vehicles. So exactly the same as we had before. And I've also created the vehicle uh, type model, which now has the name here instead of the number what the vehicle had. 
once uh, we have created a vehicle uh, type component yeah don't don't forget to uh, set it here in the declarations so you have to declare it here and in the routing we want to create a new route we want to create vehicle types route so now you're able to actually go to slash vehicle types so in the menu component you add a new link slash vehicle types with the name vehicle types so you can see it in the menu and that's pretty much it then we go on to the vehicle component HTML. There we have added this um, select field. So let me just uh, clear this. So this is uh, our Dropbox where we are selecting all of the vehicle types. And you can see that we are iterating through this array and I'll show you later where it is. So the value is the type that's inside of this array and we're just displaying its name because that's what we are interested in. So nothing special. Um, we just have to make sure that the form control uh, name is set correctly, which is in our case type. And we also have extended the vehicle table to show the type. So we added a new column called type where we show the vehicle dot type dot name. So if we go to the vehicle component TS, yes, you can see that now we have uh, extended the column, which I mentioned. Now we have the type column. We also extended the vehicle form. Now we have the type here, which is, um, being set on the HTML. And we also have the array of vehicle types. So all of the possible vehicle types are loaded once we open this. So once you create this component, we load all of the vehicle types and we use them in this Dropbox. If you would create a new one um, while the application is running or some other user creates it, maybe you want to send a stop update here. So listen for this and then also uh, extend this array but for us it's not really that important so I didn't uh, play with it but you can definitely do that as an extra thing that you want. Um, worry not all of this code will be, we, will be available on GitHub so I will push it as soon as I create this video and um, I will also link it in the description of the video so you can just take a look there at exactly the changes I did and you can try to do them on your own or you can just check it out and um, yeah, go through them and see how they look like. And it's actually quite simple. I just want to show you how you can link two entities uh, in a database. So if you have any questions or if something is unclear, uh, do leave me a comment and I will try to get to it as soon as possible. For everything else, uh, you can send me an email. Uh, if you're interested for something, uh, just let me know. If you want to see something, also let me know. And if you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel and like the video. It will really help me out. Great, then I guess I will see you in the next one.